Hello guys, thank you so much for being with us so far. This is No My Science Tutors Online and uh, welcome to our class for today. I remain Otobo Maike and this is No My Science Tutors Online. We are bringing physics directly to your very doorstep. So if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like, click on the notification button so that when we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. You can reach us through the number that is showing right on your screen, the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. So please get your writing materials so that we'll go, we'll go to our class for today. Today we'll be looking at angular projection. Don't forget we've treated horizontal projection. So for today we are looking at angular projection. Angular projection. So please just get ready so that we'll go straight to our class. angular projection okay so when an object is projected at an angle to the horizontal as I said before in our previous class when we discuss horizontal projection the object for horizontal projection described a half parab parabola but for angular projection the object will describe a full par parabolic curve a full parabolic curve is like half of a circle. That is when you cut a circle into two. What you have is half of a circle. So that one looks like a full parabolic curve. So that is a parabolic curve. Is that okay? Then its velocity of projection decreases slowly and slowly as it gains height. Normal. You know, when you project an object upward, the velocity will start, will start to decrease gradually because of the force of gravity that is acting against its motion. Then at maximum height reach, the velocity becomes zero. At maximum height, velocity becomes zero before the object will begin to come down. Right? Because of the gravity, the object returns to the same projection plane, a distance arrow from the point of projection. This distance arrow is also known as a range. It is the distance from the point of projection to the point that the object touches the ground. Right? So when an object that moves through its two space on projection is called a projectile. Then the path taken by a projectile is called trajectory. Okay, so this is the shape of um, a half of a parabola. This object, this is the initial velocity, and if you look at this velocity that is at this angle to the horizontal, it has two components. It has the vertical component, and then it also has the horizontal component along the horizontal direction. Then the distance between from the point of projection to the point at which this ball touches the ground is known as the range. And then the highest point is the maximum height. At maximum height, velocity is final velocity is equals to zero. At maximum height, final velocity is equals to zero. So this uh, diagram shows everything that happens along the part of a parabola or of an object that is describing a parabola. Is that okay? So we are going to look at the equations that are related to angular projection. Okay, so this is the components of the velocity of this uh, projectile. So if an object is projected with an initial velocity u at an angle theta to the horizontal, this velocity can be resolved into the vertical component and the horizontal component that I've said before. Now the vertical component of the velocity is u sine theta why the horizontal component is the u cos theta. The horizontal component is velocity along the horizontal axis. That's okay. So with this information, we will now derive the equations for angular projection. So when an object is projected at an angle to the horizontal, at a particular point t, the vertical component of the velocity vy, we said that the vertical component of the velocity is u sin theta. 
right? So from the from that um, first equation of motion, we know that we had that v is equals to u minus gt. That is for the first equation of motion for upward motion for acceleration due to gravity. So this vertical component or the velocity is what is written by this. So vy will now be equals to substitute u sin theta into this so that you have u sin theta minus gt. Okay, but if the object is coming down, then the vertical component will be u sine theta plus gt. So depending on the direction of motion on the object, upward or downward, you know the operator to use minus or plus. Is that okay? You know the operator to use minus or plus. Now, Having known this, we want to find the equation for the time to get to the maximum height. Now, from this equation of motion, from this first one, from this first equation, from this particular first one, since the object is going upward, then we'll use that V is equals to U sine theta minus gt please just take note of this equation because in most of your exams you see this equation of projector right now at maximum height at maximum height v is equals to zero at maximum height this v is equals to zero so you have zero is equals to u sine theta minus gt now remember that when an object is going up, right, at maximum height, the object will stop momentarily. Yes, at this maximum height, the object will stop momentarily. That's why the velocity is zero. So that when someone says the velocity is zero, you don't have to be confused. The object will rise gradually until you attain the maximum height. It will stop momentarily before it will start to come down. So because it is stopping momentarily, it is no more accelerating. So velocity is equal to zero at that point before it will now start to decelerate downward. Is that okay? I hope you understand that. Right? So try to understand why the velocity is equal to zero. So if velocity is equal to zero, you can show that u sine theta is equal to gt. From here you can make your t this subject so that your t becomes u sine sin theta all over g so this is the first equation for projectile and that is the time for flight that is the time to attain maximum height now just like as we said for an object that is projected vertically upward the time to attain maximum height is also the cost to the time from maximum height to the ground so which means that the time the total time of flight will be equals to this time to maximum at the maximum height plus the time to come down. And if the total time are equal, it means that total time of flight t is equals to 2t. So substitute for t to this equation, we have that total time of flight is equals to 2u sine theta. All over g so this is the equation for total time of flight and this is the equation for time to attain mass well, that is t mass this is t mass time to attain maximum height then this is the total time of flight 2 multiplied by u sine theta is that okay so you need to take note of these equations because you'll be using that to solve a lot of problems. Okay, so that's how to derive the equation for the time of 
to attain maximum height and then the total time of flight. Okay. So this is what we have discussed so far now. Okay, so this is the total time of flight. Time of flight to U and total of G. Right? If you have known the total time of flight, you can equally find the maximum height acting from the third equation of motion. We had that V squared is equals to U squared U squared minus 2G H mass. Right? In mass. Now, your U is the vertical component of your velocity. Now, we said that maximum height V is equals to 0. So, this becomes 0. And then here you have U sine theta. Now, because this sine theta is equal to U is squared, then everything here will be squared. Okay? So, everything there will be squared. So, you have 2 g h mass now we are looking for h mass we are looking for h mass so this will give you u sine theta all squared all squared give you equals to 2 G H mass. So you can divide both sides by divide both sides by two G so that you have that U square sine theta all squared all over two G equals to h mass okay so that is the equation for h maximum this is the equation for h maximum right okay so that's what i've already derived this equation for h maximum right so you need to take note of that equation then for the range, for the range, you remember when we did, um, when we discussed uh, horizontal projection, we had that since this uh, motion on the horizontal direction, g is equals to zero, as shown to the gravity is equals to zero, so we can just relate to that equation that um, the range, which is the distance, From this equation, from this equation, um, U T plus half plus half G T squared plus half G T squared. G is equal to zero along the horizontal axis. So this this part of the equation becomes zero. So that what you have will be R is equals to range is equals to U T. Alright. So your T is your your T is your total time of flight. Right, your t is your total time of flight. The total time of flight. So when you bring that in, the velocity here is the horizontal component of the velocity. So you, when you bring that in, you have u cos theta times your t from our previous. Uh, 
derivation where that t is equals to u squared we are that t is equals to t is equals to 2u sine theta right 2u sine theta that is our t that's what we have 2u sine theta over g so substitute that to this equation we are in position of your t you have 2u sine sin theta all over g okay so you can you work this out So this one will now give you two if you multiply this out you have two times u squared two u squared sine theta cos theta two u squared sine theta times cos theta all over g all right so this is your range now this equation can be simplified further you can simplify it further so if you want to simplify it further you look at you bring out two sine theta cos theta from trigonometric identities two from trigonometry two Two sine two sine theta cos theta is equals to sine two theta. See the two here. This is the two. Then this is sine theta cos theta. So two sine theta cos theta is from trigonometric identity is sine two theta. So if you substitute that into this equation, it will give you that range. Your range now will be equals to your range will now be equals to u squared sine two theta all over g. So this is the equation for your range, right? This is the equation for your range, u squared sine 2 theta all over g. This is the equation for range. So this is, it. This is the equation for range. This is the equation for range. Now, for you to get a maximum range, for you to get a maximum range, it means that the sine of your angle the sine 2 theta should also be maximum <coughs> and the maximum sine of an angle is when the angle is uh, 90 degrees the maximum sine of an angle is when the angle is 90 degree that's when you have the maximum value for sine okay so to get the maximum range for you to get the maximum range it means that your theta when you multiply your theta by 2 it should be equal to 90 degrees and which means that your theta should be 45 degrees so take note of this information these are this these are examination information for you to get a maximum range from your projector you must put the angle at 44 45 degrees that gives you a maximum range so at maximum range the angle theta should be 45 degrees this is a key information that you need to take, take note of you know when you multiply 45 by 2 you have 90 
and sine 90 is equal to 1, which is the maximum sign that you can get. I hope that is clear. So please take note of that information, it's very key. So maximum range, if you substitute that into that equation, you are going to have u squared all over, all over g because sine 2 theta is equal to 1. So if this is 1, then that, your, your initial equation will become r mass equals to u squared all over g. So in case you are given any equation like this, please take note of this uh, equation. This equation I used to get your maximum result if the angle is 45 degrees. But if it is not 45 degrees, then you do your normal calculations to get your maximum range. That's okay. It is only when the angle is 45 degrees that you use this equation. But if it is not, solve the problem using the equation that you derived. Right? Okay. Projector is, is very useful, and these are the areas in which projector studies are very, very key and important. One, projector is useful in launching missiles in warfare. Yes, if, um, if a bomber or a missile operator want to, want to launch missile to strike another territory, they have to calculate the angle of projection. Once the angle of projection is calculated and the range is known, there are instruments that you can use to calculate everything and then they will hit their target as required. So projectile is useful in launching of missile and warfare. It is also used in shooting of arrows, guns and launching of rockets. In sports, football, training of discos or javelin, projectile is also useful. Taking off and landing of an aircraft, projector is also useful in this uh, regard. So these are areas where projector motion, uh, the area where it is useful, and it is key that you understand all this, right? So thank you so much. This is where we are stopping for this class for today. I hope you have learned a lot. So in our next class, we are going to solve problems on this uh, projector motion. Angular projection will solve some problems on them, right? So guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. Also, invite your friends so that they can come and enjoy this uh, YouTube classes. I remain on top of my care, and this is Number My Science to Source Online. You can reach us through the WhatsApp number that is showing right on your screen. Please. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and um, place your comment on the comment section. We hope to provide we hope to provide to you the best learning experience in physics. So thank you for your time. We'll see you in our next class.